Just want to give a quick thanks to everyone tuning in. This isn't the Eric McRae show at the moment. We are on a short hiatus with that respect, but we'll get that back up and running as soon as possible. In the meantime, I'm just going to upload little bits and bobs. You may or may not be interested. Um, they'll be a little bit unorthodox. They may not be quite what you expect. Um, today, today's um, video is just going to be me having a back and forth with someone um, about really reports and the validity of reports. Um, and when I say reports, I mean things that look into the likes of institutional racism within our government systems. And so there'll be something else to come with respect to that in the coming days as well. But in this particular video, I'm basically having a back and forth with someone um, who is, well, trying to outline that everything that I say about the illegitimacy of many reports that claim institutional racism in this country is nonsense, and he's here to put me right. And so essentially I break down what he's saying. Um, and in this case, we're discussing institutional racism that's allegedly taking place in the community of Wairua, um, which I believe is in the Hawke's base. So that's what we're looking into. It may or may not be your thing. Um, I try and add a little bit of humour to it where I can kind of point out the ironies in his arguments. Um, so thank you once again for tuning in. Let's get to the facts, shall we? So what I have here, Mr. Eric J.K. M. Cray, however you say your name. You're not familiar with European names. Noted. Come on, mate. It's not that difficult. Eric. The J is pronounced E or I. Eric. Not hard, is it? Maybe you'll know this from now on. And the idea that you live in this country and don't know how MC works in a name. Whew, that's a little bit of a tough pill to swallow. Poor Scottish people. Um, is that they're hiding a report. And this report, unlike all of the supposed or alleged reports... The many reports that you had read that were apparently just based on perception. The eye rolling is a little bit disconcerting. It suggests to me that perhaps these perception based reports I've read are fantasies, things that have never happened. Oh boy, will you be eating your words in a few minutes from now? I'm not sure how that works, but okay. This report is not that. That's absolutely great to hear, but unfortunately, as we'll all come to realise in the coming minutes, I've got no way of substantiating that, because in the eight minute video you make, not once do you provide access to the evidence. And in the 12 hours up to the point that I'm making this video, you've refused to provide me a link to that report. A report which I did spend a good chunk of time trying to actually look for, but I could not find access to the report itself. Something that you're keeping close to your chest because you want to limit access to me, because you know, if I read it, it may not quite hold up. And just to give you some more facts here, so that you don't get tripped up on perception, it says here, this research project, okay, this is a research project, was funded by the Wairoa Taifenua Ngāti Kahungunu through the Ministry of Education Whānau Engagement Fund. So the aim of the study was to investigate the high levels of school student disengagement evident in the Wairoa community to better understand the causes and solutions. So just to reiterate, this was actually funded by the Ministry of Education. The government themselves funded this report. Phenomenal. That's absolutely great to hear. But that's literally what that fund is there for. To help fund certain things to improve whānau engagement. That's why it's called the Whānau Engagement Fund. You see, the government puts money towards things to help improve outcomes or uh, get to the bottom of what's going on. Reports such as these. Now, I'm not familiar with the specific fund itself, but... These funds kind of speak for themselves, do they not? But you've outlined that it's being commissioned by the Wairoa Tai Whenua and Ngati Kuhungunu, which means these are people with a vested interest in what's happening to their people, right? Now, I'm not sitting here and claiming that I know what their preconceptions are of what's causing the issues within education particularly. All I can acknowledge is that those commissioning the report may indeed have their preconceptions, and if those preconceptions in any way influence the outcome, well, then that is something that would undermine the legitimacy of those outcomes. Now, given you haven't provided me access to the report, I cannot say one way or the other whether that's the case. Um, so I'll just have to take it at face value that they don't have any preconceptions misleading or guiding the report to reach certain conclusions. Now, what I do know is that given you have refused to give me access, that you are worried that if I read it, perhaps I might be able to reach that conclusion. But 
what can I really say other than hypothesize in that respect? And just to reiterate, this is a research-based project, okay? And it was based on analysed data. And actually the data came directly from the Ministry of Education. So the data that was analysed and used in this report came from the Ministry of Education. It came from the government themselves, which in my mind would be very hard to refute. Impressive. A report that relies on data that actually exists. Never heard of one of those before. Now, in your mind, it'd be very hard to refute. Well, it is pretty hard to refute when you refuse to give me access to the report. <laughs> ah, I suppose the convenience of having a report that is not as accessible as others. If you ask me. And clearly not based on perception. You rubbish this whole perception thing as if I'm just making it up. But where this started was you misrepresenting what I have stated about perception. You see, I didn't state that the reports were just perception. I stated that the method of reaching the outcomes that they did were rooted in the perception of those participating in the study. There was a legitimate study, and they showed people who outlined that they experienced this, this, and this. Didn't provide evidence of it, they just said, this was my experience because of this series of events, and it's my belief that this suggests institutional racism, and as such, the report concluded that institutional racism exists purely based on the words of the biased party alone. Despite the fact that they could provide no evidence of structural policies which led to that treatment, that there was any underlying issue regarding to racism within the actual staff that were being accused at all. This is what I mean. They came to a conclusion based on the perception of individuals with skin in the game. Furthermore, in this executive summary, it clearly states there is clear evidence of structural racism and systemic state failure to adequately address the needs and aspirations of tamariki, rangatahi and whānau Māori within Wairua. Analyzed data, let me repeat, Analyzed data clearly shows that the state has passed on responsibility for equity to the wider community whilst retaining power and enforcing institutionally racist structures and systems that have constrained the ability of the community to make any headway. I mean, come on. How much more needs to be told here? How, uh, uh, as dumbfounded as you are. I mean, imagine telling me all of that and then refusing me access to the evidence that proves it. Imagine making an eight minute video like you have, citing these conclusions and then not actually providing the evidence part, you know, the, the, the part of the actual report which shows how they've reached the conclusion, the most important part in my opinion. Imagine not showing that part and then refusing me access to it so that I can make an well, as objective a video response as possible. I'm as dumbfounded as you are. You can say absolutely every single one of those things, but you didn't provide any evidence of it actually being substantiated. If you cannot prove, prove it happened based on evidence, and you just rely on the claims themselves, and they are no more than claims. A conclusion without evidence is a claim. So the report was divided into five sections. I want to bring your attention to section three, just to this little bit here, because it really speaks to something that I want to really touch on to help my Mr. EOJK M. Cray understand that what he is talking about is absolute bollocks. It states here, accessing specialist support services for tamariki and rangatahi is a significant challenge. Lack of access to appropriate specialist support appears to perpetuate Many of the issues Fano and their tamariki are experiencing. Psychosocial issues have a significant impact on engagement, including the prevalence of physical violence, drug and alcohol abuse. While cited as a major barrier to educational engagement in Wairua, these issues are a symptom of years of systemic inequality and inadequate action on the part of the state to address these. Let me read that again on the part of the state to address these. So essentially it's your argument that because the government has failed in education, which it's failing everyone in education in every area of the country, 
Um, because the government's failing in education, particularly in Wairua, that is evidence of systemic racism, despite providing absolutely no evidence of systemic racism, because no definition of systemic racism has been met by anything you've stated in this video up till this point. So in other words, they analysed the data that came back from attendance over the many generations that have gone past, actually showed that this issue was increasing and, no, and there was no support, there was no extra funding or dump of money coming into this area to help make any changes towards these systemic issues that are clearly showing in this area and in this region of the country. So the government hasn't funded the community of Wairua sufficiently to address undisclosed systemic issues from undisclosed evidence, and that's evidence to further suggest systemic racism. Interesting. Now, bad attendance is a very big issue. Things that relate to education or achievement across the board is a very big issue in this country. And in lower socioeconomic communities, that seems to be more prevalent. Now, one part of this is that lower socioeconomic communities seem to have higher rates of alcohol abuse, drug abuse, um, antisocial behavior, including gang activity. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but Wairua has a little bit of a reputation for gang activity, does it not? Has a little bit of a reputation for drug and alcohol abuse, does it not? And it is, of course, a lower socioeconomic community, which means even if the government decided to just pump shit tons of money into there tomorrow, how are any of those things that we've, I've just mentioned going to be addressed just by pumping money into it? What are the systemic things within the education system specifically which you've refrained from mentioning? that are actually causing this issue? Or is the issue that we're actually discussing here not related to the education system as such, but more related to the home life, the home environment that all of these kids are from? Because having known someone from Wydor who is a gang member, I can tell you right now, it wasn't the education system which prevented him from going to school, it was his family <laughs> it was his environment. Now, it's just one person, of course, purely anecdotal. But my point is, to blame this issues in Wairua on undisclosed systemic issues of the education system, whilst ignoring some r relevant aspects of that community. So, if you're going to ignore all of those things, and then cite a report whilst avoiding all of the things that actually substantiate what you say and only relying on the conclusions reached, then you're not actually proving anything. You are, as I previously stated, making a claim or coming to a conclusion without the evidence, which makes it no better than a claim. Which to me sounds very much like a breach of Te Tiriti or Waitangi. But where in Te Tiriti or Waitangi does it say that failing to fund a certain community made up of a range of different peoples to the level that that community wants, where is it that that is a breach? What article was that one in? Because that makes no sense. Don't cite a document if you have no idea what it says. Now, if the Hokainga here wanted to actually take that to the High Court, I would say that through this report, they would have, that the government will have a fight on their hands. The Crown, sorry, will have a fight on their hands. I simply cannot agree or disagree because you've refused me access to the actual evidence part. So, I mean, what am I going to do? Further up in Section 3, it actually talks about the high rates of exclusions and expulsions within this area in comparison to other comparable areas. And what are these comparable areas? Havelock North? It's convenient that you haven't mentioned those comparable areas, isn't it? But for the high rates of exclusions, expulsions, and so forth. That tends to happen in lower socioeconomic communities where there are, of course, issues in the home um, because a lot of those issues at home come with them to school and, well, they don't necessarily behave themselves. I talked about the high number of particularly male students who were uh, looking to attend schools out of the wider region and, um, and seek, uh, to seek a better education, basically. Um, Funny you say that, I did the exact same thing in my schooling years. I lived somewhere, I had access to a much closer school, but the school was not a good school. There was lower rates of educational achievement, and there was a relatively high rate, compared to what I was used to, 
of violence, bullying, and antisocial behavior. This was consistent with the low socioeconomic and, generally speaking, gang-run communities many of these students came from. As such, I went out of town to go to school. This is a norm. This is what people do when they don't want to be surrounded by people who are going to impact their learning and make them feel unsafe. I went through that, and my siblings went through the exact same thing. That's just a reality of some communities. And, and that this is a perpetual thing and has become the norm, much like a common thing throughout families and generations of the families around here because they've never had any trust or real true value or ability, or ability to be able to value the education system that has been handed to them. And you've just touched on something that I like to call ideological oppression. You see, they have a specific, particular view of the systems, the white man systems, as some refer to it. Um, and as such, that alters how they engage with said systems. Now, I'm not saying that the educational system in Waitau is particularly good. I'm sure it's an absolute joke, as it is in many parts of the country. But to say that just because the system shit, which it is in many places, that somehow it's systemically racist without providing any evidence of systemic racism in eight minutes. Now, one last fact for you there, Mr. Eyre, around this report is that it was also helped put together by many of the educators around here who are not Māori, who are in fact white, white middle-aged principals who share the same views, who share the same data, who share the same perspectives. What actually is it that you're trying to prove here? I mean, seriously, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty important question. Why are you bringing ethnicity of people involved into it? I mean, you've acknowledged that they have the same perspective, so the same world view, which suggests that there's an underlying bias, that there's a certain ideological view that one has with respect to this report and trying to get the outcomes that they are. Now, I can't speak to the process in which they got the outcomes because, well, I haven't seen any evidence of it because you've denied me access to it. And I'm going to keep reiterating that. You have denied me access to the report because you know, if I looked at it, I would have more to work with. And that's the last thing you want, isn't it? So now you're relying on the claiming, oh, some white fellas agree, so it must be completely factual. It can't be anything untoward. It can't be anything misleading because white fellas agree. It's actually ridiculous. The fact that you'd even mentioned that shows that you're kind of clutching at straws at the end here. That has been mentioned in this report. Perspectives, Mr. Ear, that you are clearly missing in your own perceived ideology. I mean, what would your rebuttal be to one of these middle-aged principals, female principals who've been around here for 30 years, I know a few of them, um, who share the same views as what's been mentioned in this report? What would your rebuttal be to them? Show me the evidence. Something that you haven't done. <laughs> Are you just going to come back to them and say, oh, that, that, that's, that's, your, that's just you affirming your preconceived ideas? Well, if they've got evidence proving that it's not just them affirming their preconceived ideas, then that's not a problem. But if, like yourself, they do an eight-minute video showing absolutely nothing but the conclusions and none of the evidence which resulted in the conclusions, well, then I might just have to reach the conclusion based on the evidence in front of me, called the eight-minute video, that all you've got is a bunch of preconceived ideas and you're affirming them by relying solely on the conclusion and ignoring the evidence. For you to sit there and actually openly on social media state that you do not believe that systemic racism exists in this country spells delusional for me. It really, really does. Yet you had eight minutes to prove that I'm delusional and failed to do so. Isn't that interesting? I'll admit there's systemic racism against Māori the moment there's actually evidence proving it. Um, the fact that you think that researched reports are based on people's perceptions. Hey, hey, hey. Not long now until you'll see exactly what I mean. I mean, do you even have any real understanding on what, on how research is undertaken? Do you actually know anything about research? Because from what I'm hearing, it sounds like you don't. My apologies, you're right. I never once did research. 
in my capacity as chief executive of a social enterprise, which won awards. I never once did research when I had my short spell in law school. I never once did research in the many, many hours I put in to studying the constitutional arrangements of New Zealand, Australia, Iran, <laughs> the US, Russia, and so forth. I never once did research then. No, it's just all popped into my head as some delusion. I never once never once did research when I spent countless hours studying Te Tiriti o Waitangi. I never once did research when I put together a 30-minute video absolutely breaking down every element of Te Tiriti o Waitangi and dispelling some myths that are far too long held in this nation. Never once. Research is a foreign concept to me. Never heard of it. What the hell is that? And after our little exchange and messages and finding out that you're actually partly Māori yourself, um, I'm absolutely disgusted. I am absolutely 100% disgusted. And it brings me to the recent words that were shared by Hannah in Parliament to the Honourable Winston Peters. Momo to toto Māori. Momo to toto Māori. Momo to toto Māori. And you finished it off with a healthy dose of ad hominem. Could not expect any more from you, kind sir.